Well, WJZ recently reported on some groundbreaking research being done by Johns Hopkins scientists into a hallucinogenic drug. Psilocybin. In a clinical setting, they are studying to see if it can help with depression, anxiety, addiction, and more. But what about the thousands who take the drug on their own outside of a controlled environment? Denise Koch reports on a global survey that's been launched by Johns Hopkins Behavioral Biology Research Center to learn more about the positive and the negative effects of using psilocybin. Heather Jackson used psilocybin in a controlled setting to help her recover from years of emotional trauma. It was a, an extremely profound experience and provided a lot of healing for me. Sort of an ego-dissolving, uh, colorful, transformative experience. Yeah, uh, you've, desc you've described it very well. Heather is president of the nonprofit Unlimited Sciences. Her son, Zakai, was born with a seizure disorder and was near death at the age of nine when Heather says he was given cannabis and went into remission. Zakai is now 17 on no pharmaceuticals, and That's Heather is committed to learn more about natural so solutions. Fun. So in August, Unlimited Sciences and Johns Hopkins Behavioral Biology Research Center launched a global survey asking people who use psilocybin to share their experiences. So far, we've got a little over 2,400 people enrolled in the study, and on average, the people who did uh, fill out the survey uh, said that they had about 15 uses of psilocybin in their lifetime. Psilocybin is a naturally occurring compound found in more than 200 species of mushrooms. It and other hallucinogenic drugs target the brain's serotonin 2A receptors, setting off a cascade of activity. In a clinical setting, everything is controlled. As enacted here, you have guides who stay with you for the up to eight hours that the drug is taking effect. Kind of helping them move through the difficult experience. But the people Hopkins is trying to reach use psilocybin recreationally for pleasure or other personal reasons. As one survey participant wrote, My intention is to better understand how I can help the world be productive and relieve day-to-day -day anxiety. Dr. Romeo says about a third of those taking the survey say they have an anxiety disorder, about a quarter have a mood disorder, and about a third have no mental health condition. Were they helped by the drug? We're seeing improvements in stuff like quality of life, um, social functioning. Similarly, we're seeing things like um, anxiety, depression, and burnout um, drop after these experiences. Look at these two images. On the left, the brain without the drug. On the right, the brain on psilocybin. There's far more connectivity on the right. This increase in connectivity may allow for a brief period of plasticity, a period in which the brain can change the way it's connected. That elasticity can take the mind to unexpected places and change the person who takes the trip. About 45% of people said they're doing this for uh, purposes of self-exploration. Participants are surveyed before they take psilocybin, right after and two months later. One person shared, and I quote, an emotional dam broke during my session when it was over, I felt emotional vulnerability that slowly gave way to calm and peace. This was possibly the most therapeutic session that I ever had. Hopkins does not advocate taking psilocybin or any other drug, and a few participants have had difficulties. We found that about 13 people so far have sought medical or psychological treatment as a result of their use. Dr. Romeo believes there are millions of people right now all over the world using psilocybin. When I used psilocybin for my own personal trauma and had such a profound experience and personal healing that I wanted to, to be able to expand that. And hopefully, you know, mitigate harm in the future for other people who might do the same thing. And Denise tells us the study will continue for another year or so. It's very really fascinating. If you are 18 or older, you speak English, and you'd like to participate, there are two websites we can give you, unlimitedsciences.org, hopkinspsychedelic.org as well.